Hello and welcome to the story shed. I hope that you're all keeping well and taking good care. And I have a classic story for you now from Grandma's Magic Storybook. Um, you probably know this one and I hope again you enjoy it. It's Hansel and Gretel. Once, a long, long time ago, a poor woodcutter lived in the forest with his two children, Hansel and Gretel. The children's real mother had died a long time ago, so when the woodcutter took a new wife, they were overjoyed. However, their joy was short-lived, for their new stepmother was a wicked woman who cared little for children. One long winter there was little food in the woodcutter's house and everybody went hungry. On one particularly cold night, Hansel and Gretel were so hungry that they could not sleep. As they lay tossing and turning in their beds, they overheard their parents talking. There's just not enough food to go around, said the wicked stepmother. Hansel and Gretel will have to go. Tomorrow you must lead them into the forest and leave them there. No, gasped the woodcutter. But the wicked stepmother wouldn't leave him alone until he agreed. What shall we do? If we're left in the forest, we're sure to be eaten by wild animals, sobbed Gretel. Hansel sat gazing out of the window while he decided what could be done to save them. Then he noticed something that gave him an idea. The moon was shining on some white pebbles, making them stand out like daisies against a green lawn. Hansel crept down to the garden and collected a handful of the pebbles. Early the following morning, Hansel and Gretel followed the woodcutter deep into the forest. As they walked along, Hansel kept stopping to drop white pebbles on the ground, and after a long walk they reached a clearing in the middle of the forest. Wait here, said their father, I am going to cut wood. I shall be back to fetch you at the end of the day. Hansel and Gretel waited and waited, but their father never returned. We'll never find our way home, said Gretel, as darkness began to fall. But Hansel told her not to worry. When the moon eventually began to shine, the pebbles that Hansel had dropped stood out just as they had in the garden. Holding hands, Hansel and Gretel followed the trail of glistening pebbles all the way home. Their father was overjoyed when they walked into the house, but their stepmother was far from pleased. A few nights later, the children overheard their stepmother talking once more. Those children really must go or we will all starve. Tomorrow you must take them even further into the forest and this time make sure they can't find their way back. After much argument, their father reluctantly agreed. And that night, Hansel tried to go out into the garden to collect pebbles, but his stepmother had locked the door. So the following day, instead of dropping pebbles, Hansel dropped breadcrumbs on their journey through the woods. Once again their father left them and promised to return before nightfall, and once again he failed to return. Hansel and Gretel waited for the moon to rise, and then looked for the trail of breadcrumbs, but there was not a single breadcrumb to be seen, for hungry birds had gobbled them all up. Hansel and Gretel wandered the forest all night long, but they could not find their way home. Then, as the sun began to rise, they came across a pretty little cottage. Hansel and Gretel could not believe their eyes, because it was made of bread, cake and sweets. They were so hungry that they began to eat bits of the pretty cottage at once. But before they eaten more than a few mouthfuls, the cottage door swung open and an ugly old witch jumped out. A witch so wicked that she had built 
her delicious house to trap innocent children. Cackling with delight, she dragged the children into her cottage and locked Hansel in an iron cage. Then she turned on Gretel. And as for you, she cackled, you're going to cook things all day long. You're going to cook lots and lots of food and feed it to your scrawny little brother until he's as round and fat as a juicy pig. And then I'm going to eat him. And if I'm still hungry, I'm going to eat you too. From then on, Hansel was given lots of the very finest food, while Gressel was given nothing but bones to gnaw on. One day, Gretel gave one of the bones to Hansel. Hold it out to the witch when she asks to feel your finger, in order to discover how fat you've become, said Gretel. She is so short-sighted, she'll never know the difference. Clever little Gretel was right, and the witch was astonished that Hansel didn't get any fatter. Then, one day she grew impatient. Fat or thin, I'm going to eat you all the same, she cried. Light the oven, Gretel. Today's the day we make boy pie. Gretel did as she was told, and soon the fire beneath the oven was blazing. Is it hot enough yet? asked the witch. I don't know, said Gretel, opening the oven door. Why don't you look in and see for yourself? So the foolish witch stuck her head in the oven and Gretel pushed her in. And then as quick as a flash, she slammed the door shut. Gretel found the witch's keys and released Hansel. And then they used the keys to open all the chests in the witch's cottage. Inside, they discovered all sorts of precious jewels. We'll be able to buy father all the food we need with this lot, laughed Hansel. When their pockets were full with jewels, they set off in search of their home. This time they found it without much difficulty, and when their father saw them, he was overjoyed that they had returned. Quickly they told each other what had happened. The woodcutter explained that their wicked stepmother had gone and Hansel and Gretel told their father all about the Wicked Witch and the jewels. From that day on, the woodcutter, Hansel and Gretel never went without food again. And that's the end of the story of Hansel and Gretel. We hope that you enjoyed it. Please write to us, let us know what you think of the story shed. If there are any improvements we could make or any stories that you'd like to hear by writing to us at the story shed blog at gmail.com. That's the story shed blog at gmail.com. And for the time being, take care, be well, and bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye.